welcome to the Lost Media Chronicles, a show which discusses various lost movies, music, art, you name it. Well, I know a lot of you were probably expecting a Doctor Who episode this time around, but after careful consideration, I've decided to make that my 50th episode. So you might be asking, what do I have in store for episode 49? Uh, well, uh, actually I didn't really think about that. Fred, what do you think I should do? Um, I don't know. Bruce Willis, The Return of Bruno? That's the next Avengers in Final Land, and it doesn't even have any lost media. Um, oh, how about Portuguese Phil of the Future? That doesn't even exist. PBS bumpers? Yeah, and then only 10-year-olds are really going to watch that episode. I need something that's actually going to catch people's eyes. Something unique. How about you cover that video game about that dumb anime you've been watching? You mean Trigun? The Lost Planet Gunsmoke game? Dude, Trigun's not dumb. Yeah, that show about the weird blonde guy who walks around with a red trench coat and a badass gun but refuses to use it like a little pussy? Yeah, that's fucking dumb. Why did I even bother consulting you? Fucking waste of feathers. Your mother. Shut up. It's not exactly a bad idea for an episode now, is it? Since I did my episode on Doraemon, I've gotten tons of requests to review more anime-related topics. I've also been getting into more series lately, so it fits that I'd cover something like this. But anime doesn't always have interesting lost media. A lot of it is lost dubs, and we all know how I feel about those. Then you run into something that's more interesting than you'd expect. And today's topic is probably one of the most unfairly glossed over pieces of lost media, and that's the Trigun game, the planet Gunsmoke. First, a disclaimer. I know this is technically a lost video game, but this is more about the anime than it is about the video game itself. And the reason behind that will become apparent as the episode moves forward. For those of you wondering why this wasn't a video game month topic, you'll find out soon enough. Trigun got its beginnings in 1995 when fledging manga artist Yasuhiro Naitao came up with a unique idea of a pacifist gunman living in a post-apocalyptic world. He used this concept to escape from his mundane day job. In February 1995, the concept was first published in an issue of Shonen magazine, Shonen Captain. The story garnered positive attention, leading to its serialization in April. Japanese readers loved Trigun's complex and westernized story, being unlike most other manga at the time. It was so popular that Naita was able to quit his day job and devote his full time to drawing and writing the story. However, Shonen Captain was cancelled before Naita was able to complete the story. Out of work, Naita approached Young King R's magazine, who let him continue the manga until its completion in 2008 under the title Trigun Maximum. Eventually it got slated for an anime adaptation run by Madhouse Productions. Naitao looked forward to seeing his characters come to life. However, despite the manga's success in Japan, the anime was, at first, widely ignored. It was seen as too western for mainstream audiences, and only garnered a small following. It was still well-liked by critics, but the successful shows like Cowboy Bebop and Neon Genesis Evangelion hogged the spotlights. The show met a quiet end after a 26-episode run. Trigun's legacy would find itself vindicated. Enter in Adult Swim. Taking over Cartoon Network's overnight block in 2001 to provide more adult-oriented animation, part of what kept Adult Swim afloat in the early years was the introduction of adult anime to American audiences. This is what made Americans so obsessed with Cowboy Bebop and Inuyasha. In 2003, Adult Swim started airing the English dub of Trigun. Despite it being five years old, it was a massive success, becoming one of the block's most popular shows. So why did Americans like it so much? Well, the brilliance of Trigun hides within its own plot. It tells the story of Bash the Stampede, a gunman with a notorious reputation. Bash lives on a strange, desolate world where resources are short and hospitality is even shorter. It's a futuristic Old West theme. Everywhere Bash goes, trouble and violence seem to follow, 
So much damage is caused by his appearance that he's wanted with a bounty of 60 billion double dollars as a reward. Bounty hunters come after him who cause more destruction in the pacifistic gunman's wake. Dash absolutely values all life and refuses to take anybody else's. Following Vash are two insurance agents, Millie and Merrill, who are given the difficult task of making contact with Vash in an effort to stop any future damage and loss of funds to said insurance company. As the story continues, it shows that Vash and the world around him have a dark past, but that's about as far as I'll go with the story without spoiling anything major. Trigun has excellently executed themes of morality and the value of life. Vash is a deeply complex character who has had multitudes of analysis essays written about him. While I haven't read the manga, I've been told by some anime fans that this is one of the rare cases that the anime does a better job of telling the story than the manga does. It's considered an all-time classic now, with some calling it the greatest of all time. Now, with such a success, you would have thought that Nightowl would have greenlit another anime adaptation or even a continuation. But, strangely enough, he wasn't that interested. As well loved as the original is, Naitao felt that the story had run its course. He felt like he just had nothing more to say. A movie was released in 2010, and it was well liked, but it was considered inferior to the original 1998 anime. Fans were looking forward to it for years, and found themselves highly disappointed when it turned out to just be good instead of great. But there's one piece of lost media that almost got fans a continuation of the story. A big announcement was made at Sega's Game Jam 2002 event that a game was coming out to the PlayStation 2. A short trailer was shown with a man with a modified arm, similar to that of Vash's, punching the screen with the title of the game Trigun the Planet Gunsmoke. It made a very small splash and got some of the fans of the series interested. Allegedly, it even had the involvement of Naitao, hinting at a possible continued story or expansion of the Trigun universe. Months and even years went by and seemingly nothing happened. Sega released a game called Gungrave four months after the announcement, which also had involvement from Naitao. Many fans believe that this is a modified version of the Trigun game. Obviously, the game is cancelled, with little luck of ever being picked back up. The game was announced in 2002. At this point, the anime was seen as a disappointment, so Sega probably saw the production of the game as a huge risk. After the failure of the Dreamcast, it probably made more sense for them to just make a new IP. Trigun also hadn't been widely introduced to a Western audience at this point, so it had limited appeal in the eyes of the game developers. Now, I'm a little dumbfounded when it comes to this game. All that seems to survive is the trailer. Screenshots don't exist and no adverts of the game were made. When Sega was approached about the game, all they had to say was a very brief no comment. It's unknown how far this game got into production or why it was cancelled. It remains one gigantic shut door in the faces of the fans. Now you might be asking, this is an interesting story and all, but does it really matter that much? And, oh, kinda. Let me explain. Look, a Trigun game would be cool, but it's unlikely that any beta or alpha build of this game would be worth anyone's time. If Sega had little to say about it, there's probably very little existing of this game. However, it should also be stated that Trigun fans have been craving for more stories that take place in the universe. It's like how Star Wars and Star Trek have such a vast and immersive fictional universe. The world of Planet Gunsmoke and its residents are unlike anything that have really been seen in other media. Except for the copycats, that is. Nightow has shown very little interest in continuing the series on, so any type of official material that fans can get their hands of is considered gold. Now this has the potential to have a huge search party looking for it. Trigun is Daikate's personal favorite show. The nature of the show led to it having the credit of helping anime get taken more seriously by Westerners in the 2000s. I've heard one fan sum it up like this. 
It's a mixture of Cowboy Bebop's exciting thrills and Evangelion's deep artistic pondering of the universe. It offers something for everyone and it's considered culturally important and influential. Knowing that a game that might have helped expand on these beloved concepts infuriates fans, especially when there's so few details on the game's development to begin with. That about does it for this episode. Join us next time when we celebrate 50 episodes of The Lost Media Chronicles by finally talking about Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm still a little reluctant on it, but I guarantee it it's going to be in the next one because I got to do something big for that. You know, most people kind of surprise their viewers with the 50th episode. Yay, breaking conventions, even though this show doesn't really have many conventions to follow to begin with. See you later.